All right, guys, back on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. We are uh, sharing our reaction to Friday's games in SEC basketball. Yes, usually during the season, we do these on Saturday, but it's still football season. And so there are a lot of interesting football games to be played on Saturday. So we decided to do this uh, for a Sunday afternoon release. Just kind of giving you our thoughts from what was a big slate on Friday, Max. And uh, before we get into that, uh, I'm going to find uh, some thoughts from our proud sponsors, Bet Online. You, know, you can tell I'm really prepared for this because, full disclosure, <laughs> Max and I are recording uh, as all this news is coming about about perhaps multiple SEC football coaching firings. And uh, so, uh, you know, been a little split in terms of our attention uh, heading into this <laughs> one. But let's talk about our friends at Bet Online, of course. Uh, last of the major pro sports leagues, off and running college basketball, as you know, ready to go. Um, we've been talking about them here in our predictions videos, all that. So, Bet Online, still your top spot for all your live betting action and contests uh, with NFL, college football, UFC, NHL, all in full swing, too, of course. Bet Online, your number one source uh, for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. So, you can get all your college hoops betting action, get your NBA betting action. Uh, along with every, every other sport uh, available at your fingertips with both death, desktop and mobile access at any time. So if you're betting on these games, we do our predictions, videos, all that. Head to our friends, bet online today. Remember to use that promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit and bet online where the game starts. All right, we are going to talk about, Max, just uh, some of the bigger games took place on Friday. We're not going to have a chance to go through every single game because uh, we are a little, you know, a couple days removed from it now. So let's start with a a positive, which there were quite a few for the SEC, I would say, on this Friday night slate. Some not so much, but let's start with Georgia. Um, Georgia was a team that, you know, like we said, probably if you're just looking at it from a scheduling standpoint, the only team that's played, you know, what, two power conference teams to this point, I believe, unless I'm just forgetting one, um, you know, lost Oregon first game, felt like just, you know, couldn't get over the hump in that game to, get where they need to be to make it competitive. Um, you know, they had chances early, but they just couldn't capitalize. This was different where, you know, I thought this was a game. Wake Forest hit some threes um, to kind of get back into, I guess, because Georgia was up, I guess, what, 13, 15, something like that, about midway through the second half. Um, but find a way to win here. All five starters and double figures. Um, I was pretty impressed. I thought this was the kind of game, again, if you're going to see Georgia take a step this year, I thought it was a nice bounce back, and I know your guy, Noah Thomason, bounces back with a, a big performance here, too, 21 points in this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like what I saw. I watched pretty much this whole game. Um, man, that that slate had like a first round to March feel to it on <laughs> yeah. Friday, just with, with how many good games there were. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing that stood out to me was Thomason and Melendez combining for zero turnovers after they combined for yeah. eight against Oregon. I mean, that's a lot of points, uh, eight possessions worth, you know. So uh, I thought the backcourt looked much better, um, but they were out-rebounded again, you know, by, uh, and they, you know how bad the Oregon game was with the rebounding. And Wake Forest isn't a great rebounding team. They don't have, you know, big stocky guys. Their big men are a little bit thinner. So still to be out-rebounded is a little bit of a head-scratcher for me. But um, nonetheless, I mean, Good, good bounce back win to get in the win column and just get the ball rolling uh, for this season a little bit. I, not much bad to say. Yeah, Georgia plays uh, North Carolina Central today, Sunday as we're recording this. So, but then they get Miami on Friday. So, and Miami yeah, looks good. That, yeah, Miami looks good, and um, really so good. we'll we'll talk about that one uh, heading into it. When we do our predictions and preview uh, video for that heading into Friday's games. But yeah, Georgia, I thought nice bounce back here, and nice you know. Like I said, rebounding wise, I mean, really, they only play one guy over six nine, um, and so we'll see how that looks because we know the SEC too. There's a lot of a lot of teams sporting six ten, multiple six ten guys on the floor at the same time uh, right. in some instances. So we'll see how that uh, unfolds there, but with you know George rebounding. So all right, let's talk about A and M going on the road, getting a win over Ohio State, seventy three sixty six. A and M wins that one. I thought this was. Kind of what you want to see from AM. This yep. is, you know, we talked going into it. We said, hey, this is one of those where I mean, we remember last year, right? Where it was AM lost some games in the non conference. They shouldn't have lost, um, just didn't play well. But yeah, they got enough out of their big three here to get it done. Now, I don't think this was the prettiest game. 
um, at times. But these, again, are the kind of games you just go out and win. Any any means necessary. <laughs> you got to win the games, right? And so, of course, you know, if you watch the game, it was very clear for A&M who was going to be the guys they were going to go to uh, in key situations. That was Henry Coleman, Tyrese Radford, Wade Taylor. They all scored 20 points or more. Uh, Coleman had 20. Radford and Taylor had 21 each. You know, no one else had more than four. So is that, you know, concerning moving forward? We'll see. But I think, again, we've talked about it, Max. Without Julius Marble, it does take one guy, key guy out of the rotation. And I think long-term, that could make an impact. But I'm not going to knock them for going on the road and getting a win here. They only hit three threes. I mean, again, that's hard to go on a road and win a game like this when you only make three threes, shot 17% from three. Um, and so, yeah, I, I thought this was one where – you take it any way you can get it. Uh, may not have been the prettiest at times, but yet you find a way to get things done here. And the big three, uh, they did just that. So, plus ten as a team rebounding. Thought that was yeah. the difference in the game. Um, Anderson Garcia was great. Thirteen rebounds. He was. He was. He stepped up real big in that game. Ohio State's kind of poor. Um, I, I don't think Ohio State's a great team. And anytime you have Bruce Thornton shooting twenty times a game. It's something's a little bit wrong with the offense. Um, but maybe that you, Oakland game told us more than we thought about Ohio State. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you nailed it with you. You get a win. You, you just got to get a win on the road here. Um, I mean, last year, if this team was on the road early season, they went three for 18 from three. They probably lose that game. You, yeah. you know what I mean? So the the culture's there for Texas A&M. The, the core is there. I would like another option to step up if it's Hefner, if it's Carter, if it's Lawrence, um, Solomon Washington. You know, I would like another option to step up. But I mean, you, you just went on the road to a Big Ten, hostile Big Ten environment, didn't shoot well, and came away with a win. So, um, yeah, I mean, looks good to me. And got off to a slow start. They were down seven nothing right off. Oh the yeah, I mean, how many SEC teams got off to just a terrible start? On it was Friday looking night? rough early. Quite a few teams like just <laughs> came out and. Looked brutal early on, but yeah. um, A&M able to turn around. Some other teams were not. Good win. Yeah, I got thought good win, like you said. We don't know, we don't know where Ohio State finishes, but you'll take that over a, a Big Ten team that, um, yeah, I think will still be fine. They just may not be uh, elite-type level. Right. So, all right, this next one did not go in the SEC's favor. Uh, Virginia, 73, Florida, 70. Boy, you, little did you know, Max, when you asked the question to me in our preview – it, would my pick be different if Zion Pullen played in this game? And I said, maybe. I said, you know, because that'd give him more opportunity to have, you know, four guards on the floor at the same time. You got another ball handler. Little did you know that, you know, you were asking the biggest question that would determine this game. <laughs> um, because it did. You know, Florida had 16 turnovers, but it wasn't just 16 turnovers. It was the turnovers at the wrong time. And, you know, it was kind of late where you felt like the opportunity – was just sitting right there for Florida to take this game. And they just couldn't do it because they just sort of, you know, again, not taking anything away from Virginia, but Florida kind of beat themselves in terms of just making mistakes at the wrong moments. Um, and yes, now that you, I, in hindsight, I'll answer your question emphatically. Yes, this would probably be different when Zion Well, hey, I was, I was a little down on this Virginia squad, but they're not too bad at all. You know, no. they, they kind of run that offense through Reese Beekman, and they've got some good freshmen there. McNeely stretches the floor really well. Virginia's been on the downswing the past few years, but this isn't this is not a not a shabby squad here in Virginia. Um, but yeah, I literally have in my notes I said need, need Zion Pullen. Um yeah. veteran guard with a two to one assist to turnover ratio over the past two years. And just Nothing against Walter Clay and Kugel and Richard, but it's just like you, you play 35 minutes against a team like Virginia. You early season, you're gonna get tired and make a few mistakes. It's just inevitable. Um, a little bit of a three point struggle. Uh, Kugel is two of ten on the year. Clayton's one of eight on the year. I think mm -hmm. um, with both of those guys shooting closer to 40 percent, you know, last year, that's um, those averages are probably gonna come. You no, know, they'll start shots will start falling. Um, so. Turnover is bad, but Florida murdered the boards plus 17 on rebounding um, yeah. in this game, you know, so that's great. You know, like Samuel and Han Lokton are translating very well. I don't think it's panic at all. You know, they lost, they lost a close one to a good squad. Um, I was talking to my buddy and I think of it this way. Think if EJ Jarvis and Zion Pullen 
we're going to be healthy for this game. You know, the whole lead up, they're going to be healthy. The, the line comes out. It's, you know, what it is. And then the day of the game, it's announced both EJ Jarvis and Zion Pullen are out. You know, how much does that swing your, you know, yeah. view of this game? And, you know, that's how I'm kind of trying to look at it in my head, just to kind of, you know, put into perspective, Florida was without some dudes they thought they were going to have a few weeks ago, and they still had a chance to win. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I got four four points from their bench. Played four yeah. guys off the bench, yeah. 10 plus minutes, but only got four points. You got some rebounds from from Condon and such, but um, yeah, you just didn't get a lot of production there. So yeah. it was really relying on your starting five. And like you said, Samuel and Logden, they both got double digit rebounding, but Kugel with four turnovers, Samuel with four turn or yeah, Samuel with four turnovers, Clayton with five turnovers. Mm. Um, yeah, just didn't didn't add up. And like I said, it's just hard to beat a team like Virginia, which you know is not going to make many mistakes of their own. Yeah. And so when you give Even them that, good. yeah. Right. I mean, just when you give them that many extra opportunities, it's, they're going to make you pay for it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm not panicking either on Florida. That's one of those games you love to have back. But ultimately, I think it kind of also shows that they, they can get there. Um, yep. They've just still got to, you know, get everything in place to do it. So, all right, let's move on to the other notable games here. And this next one, boy, this one turned a little bit. Uh, Memphis 70, Missouri 55. Um, I tried Missouri fans. <laughs> I, I, <knew>. tried. <laughs> I, I tried. Uh, I tried to use the mojo uh, pick formula, the reverse mojo pick, as we called it last year. I tried to use that this this season. We're gonna have to scrap it for something else because <laughs> it didn't work this time around. Uh, it worked in the first half, but it didn't work for the full game, and that's all you care about. So we'll we'll work on something else for uh, the picks. But I, I tell you what, I I saw here, Max. This was one where. I know Missouri fans are frustrated uh, after the way they started and the way they finished, but what was it? 31 points in the first 16 minutes of the game scored 24 points the rest of the way. So 24 points in 24 minutes only made six threes. What was the reason they were so successful last year? One of the reasons, because they were just so good from three, six to 28. It's not going to get it done. Um, Memphis just, and look, if you're watching that game, I mean, it's like Memphis is trying to let Missouri just, pull away like there's there's that moment where it's just like missouri just cannot capitalize and i remember the stretch where i don't remember who exactly it was there was two guys i think sean east was one of them free throw missed free throw missed free throw like one and one like just missing back-to-back free throws and it's just that's your kind of chance and, and they just they gave up all those opportunities and so if you combine everything i just said together and I saw this mention. It may have been Matt Harris from Rocky Nation. I, I'm sorry, Matt, if I'm attributing this and you're not the right person, but um, it, more, more so here's my question, maybe expanding on some of the things he said. We said coming into the season, and this is the way I led anytime someone asked me about Missouri, I said, well, there's no Kobe Brown, there's no Des Moines Hodge, but there's a lot of options. But I think I'm, at least in game two, I think the bigger part of that equation is there's no Kobe Brown. There's no Des Moines Hodge, meaning who is the guy that just takes over the game like those two guys did last year when they get in one of these stretches where they're not making shots. And I don't, there, there wasn't enough of that for me. Now it can be Sean East. It can be maybe Tamar Bates. It can be someone else, but in games like this, like, early in the season, you kind of want to maybe see that separation as to who that's going to be. There's still a lot of games to be played, but that is the one thing that I looked at and said, "Mm." I I worry a little bit about that for Missouri and there's plenty of time to figure it out. And and we all, they they play enough guys that some, somebody will have the opportunity, but I don't know, man, it's, um, I, I worry when they hit those stretches like that. And I know it's only game two and I'm not saying Missouri fans should panic, but I just don't think you can discount sometimes how easy it is when you just have that one guy that you know can take over a game at any time. Some of these guys are capable of it, but they just haven't been put in that position yet. And so we'll see if someone kind of evolves into that. But I think maybe your best choice would be a Noah Carter to, yeah. to, to, to get to step into that role a little bit. Um, but man, Caleb Grill is going to, his shots will, they'll start falling. You know, he's he's, yeah. he's getting good looks, and he's a good shooter historically. Um, 
based on his, you know, his career stats, he, he's always a good shooter. So the grill starts, you know, he'll get started. What is going on with John Tanji? Like, yeah, I mean, we we thought this offseason that he was going to be a, a big, not a big piece, but like he was going to be a piece for this team. Well, I think he didn't play in game one. It was some kind of injury. I don't remember what it was. Was it? I, I think, but I don't remember the specific. Um, okay. Missouri fans will tell me, trust me, it's somebody will tell me. Um, but yeah, I, I think so. And he only played what a couple minutes in this game. So I assume minutes. that's it, but yeah. My biggest thing with this game, and, and you're going to probably get annoyed with me for keep bringing up the same stat category, but rebounding, yeah. I told, I talked about it in our preview. I said, Memphis just got out rebounded by Jackson state. Now Jackson state is no slouch, but my goodness this is the sec can't be getting out rebounded by Jackson State and then they come in and murder Mizzou on the boards 47 to 33 I was like what is going on so that was like my main head scratcher was just like man like I really I was in our preview I was like I like Missouri in this game because they struggle with rebounding and this is a team that's not going to pound them on the boards and then that's exactly what went and happened um so, yeah, I mean, some questions to be answered. I think it's more of like a rotational thing. And I was, I'll was i talk about this a little bit if we mention Auburn, where it's just like I think the the guys are there. It's just the rotation is is a little bit out of whack right now. Do you Are you seeing the same thing I'm seeing? It just seems like a little bit something's missing. Yeah, I mean, look, he played. How many guys did he play? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What is it, 12? Did he play 12 guys? <laughs> It's like it's hard um, to get going. And look, I mean, a couple of those are two or three minutes here or there, but like still that, that's a different rotation anytime you add another guy in. So yeah, yeah I mean, I, Gates is always like he's look, he likes to play a lot of guys. Like that's yep. just been something he's always done, but I don't think it'll be that way, you know, um, when we get to SEC play by any right. means. But um yeah, I mean, like you said, I look the rebounding, the defense, there is still a lot to be desired there too because Memphis was just sort of slicing and dicing yeah. there when they made that run, um, and they they did. They, they got easy buckets, uh, and when you're not hey, making Memphis shots. but Memphis is good. You know, I you know, say, let's, yeah. Let's give them their credit. I'll, I'll be honest, okay? When this, when this um, line came out, you know, we have our fun with Missouri here, but when this line came out and, and I saw this thing move to three and a half, you know what I did. Because you have a pick'em contest, and I said, Max, give me Memphis plus three and a half. Um, I just thought that I don't know. Just for me, I thought this would be a close game, and and that's where like as it started to move that far in Missouri's favor, I'm like, oh man, I don't know about that. Um, mm-hmm. Because I, I think maybe you're discounting Memphis a little bit. You know, Penny's not coaching, Stansberry's there, but still a very talented Memphis team. Um, but but again, I, it's it's disappointing for Missouri, no matter how you look at it, but. Everyone knows I'm not gonna. I'm not panicking yet on Dennis Gates. Come on, folks. Let's let's calm down. Let's not get too carried away here. Um, they they've got things to figure out. Let's yeah. You know, I think it's fair to say they've got some things they got to figure out to be to the level that they were last year. Um, but I, I'm not panicking just yet. That they've but but they they are. They're going to have some different challenges with this team that they did not have with the team last year, and I think there are multiple reasons for that. So we'll see how it unfolds for uh, the Missouri Tigers here moving forward. All right, let's get back to the good stuff. Um, Tennessee, 80, Wisconsin, 70. The balls led from start to finish in this game. Um, And I don't know, Max. I mean, this is – we're not just saying this because we both picked Tennessee to win the league, but, man, this team is – there's something I, I said, it, you know, when I do my my next day recaps on Twitter, I said, this team has it. Whatever you want to define it as, they got it. Um, and they got a lot of it, you know, in, in some areas, they got a lot of whatever it is. Uh, this was just. Look, I don't know where Wisconsin finishes in the Big Ten. I tend to think they'll finish higher, you know, more yeah. so higher than lower. Um, but like there was really never a point in this game. And and I know it's like, okay, well maybe the game was three points here or whatever. I did not really doubt Tennessee ever slipping and losing this game. Like, and that's not just saying that because they led the whole game, but like 
you felt like this team was in control. Maybe it's a little close here, maybe a little close there, but you just felt like they had the players that were going to make the plays to win the game. And it all starts with your guy, Dalton Connect. I mean, 24 points. I, I said it, Mac. I said it. he might very well wind up being, hey, look, it's hard to say. You got to look for all 300 and something teams, but he might wind up being top five nationally in terms of like most important off-season additions for any team in college basketball because he's bringing exactly what Tennessee needed in terms of a consistent scorer who can, and we just, I mean, honestly, compare it to Missouri like we just talked about, right? It's ha- like, we know who the guy is for Tennessee. I know Vescovy's still there. I know James there. I know Ziegler's there. But Connect is the guy. Two games in, there's your guy. Like, it's very obvious. So, and then you just think about everything else that this team brings to the table. I don't, everybody's going to talk about Rick Barnes and say, well, tournament and all this. I don't care. When we get to the bracket, we'll talk about it. But this team's national championship good, in my opinion. So, Blake, I watch a lot of college basketball, like a, a psych, psychotic amount. Like in, in the summer when there's no sports, I'm just re-watching college basketball from the year before. This team is one of the best teams I've seen in like some time. The defense is number one in the country. And I mean, this team put up 80 and only made five threes. Like they should have put up 90 at the Cole Center. Um, I mean, Vescovy and Ziegler combined for 10 points. Connect and Ganey combined for 34. You can flip flop that every game, doesn't matter. Someone's going to get theirs. You know, someone's going to be hitting shots. Um, and, you know, like you said, uh, it never felt out of control. Like, you know, you're at the Kohl Center and it's an early season game that, you know, Wisconsin's fired up. They'll go on a little bit of a run and the crowd will get into it. But it was just like, it, it was never in doubt because, even if there was a few possessions where Tennessee didn't score, it was like, well, they have, you know, so much talent. They're going to score eventually stretch this lead back out. Um, a Waka with 6.6 rebounds in only 12 minutes. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you, it's, it's early for analytics, so I don't like to bring it up much. Um, but with in Ken Palm's predictive analytics, they have Tennessee only losing three games and each games by like one point, like on the road. Yeah. Like, I was talking to my my buddies last night and I was like, remember back in 2015, 2016, where it was like every one seed would be like 31 and two, you know, <laughs> yeah. like 32 and one, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it was just like these teams are dominant. And now it's like the one seeds, you know, have like six losses, you know, yeah. this Tennessee team might might be one of those two, three loss teams this year. Like they just look unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, of course, everybody with Barnes, they're, they're going to always look back to the 18-19 team. They went 31-6, and six, made the Sweet 16, felt like they, they were Final Four good. Of course, that was Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield, Jordan Bone, Bowden, Lamonte Turner, so forth. Um, that, that team was probably more proven to this point in terms of like they, we had seen those guys together for longer. Um, but like I think this team to me is deeper. Than, the, than that one. Um, and look, I mean, that team too had Kyle Alexander, John Fulkerson, Pons was there. I don't remember exactly how many minutes he played that year. Um, but, but still, like, I just, the depth on this team, and like you talked about, just look at the stats for like each of these guys and where they're contributing and how it all just kind of combines together, you know, and yeah, I mean, look out. I, I think this, I, I always has things. I'm like, we're two games in. I can't go that far, but. Would it shock me if this winds up being the best team he's had there? Maybe not. Um, because I think the offensive difference mm-hmm. is is it. Like it could be the difference, just what they can do offensively. Now they gotta stay healthy, um, as always, but I really like what I've seen from this team through two games. And I, I really thought this game was kind of a defining game for them because it's not easy to go on the road and do that. Um, especially at Wisconsin, whether you, you know, think the Big Ten's overrated or not, or whatever each year, like just not easy to do. And yeah, I, I think this team has, has it, like I said a minute ago. So, all right, another one here, and then we'll kind of um, wrap up with just some general thoughts on everything else. Uh, South Carolina, 79, Virginia Tech, 77. All right, Max, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, I know we're two games in, but I think there is a, 
a very real possibility that oh, well, I mean, I, I, South Carolina is not the worst team in the SEC. Let's just no. call it what it is. They're not. Yeah, not at all. Um, we all came in the season saying that, which on paper, that's all you can do, right? But they're not the worst team in the SEC by any means. But like, are they? I mean, could they wind up being like better than the bottom four of the league? I don't know. Like, I, I think this is an interesting team to me so far. Two games in, don't like to overreact. But I tell you, man, watching this game against Virginia Tech, that starting five, which I guess you throw Jacoby right in there too. He's basically mm -hmm. what the first man off the bench, and he did play more than Stephen Clark. But let's just maybe let me just say the the four guys: Studi, Cooper, Johnson, Mac. That's yeah. a yeah. that group right there, and your starting lineup, and those guys. Like if they're on the floor a lot together, that's a pretty talented foursome right there. Um, and so. You know, again, maybe undervalue them a little bit because you're just trying to compare them to everybody else. But I really liked what I saw from Zion. This is one of those games where in recent years they lose this game, mm -hmm. you know, because this Virginia Tech team, this isn't probably, you know, this isn't one of Mike Young's best teams there. Um, I don't want to act like this is the team of whatever several years ago that was whatever, one however many. But still, man, I, I thought this was a really good win for South Carolina. Um, no matter where Virginia Tech finishes, just because they are building momentum as a team who can win these kind of games. And that's really important for a team that's lost as many as they have. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm getting excited about South Carolina basketball. How about that? Who would have thought um, a similar, similar outlook uh, from Texas A&M to this game too. Like just really solid win, you know um, I think BJ Mack and Cooper are both of them are good. Like, BJ Max is going to translate just fine. His physicality is going to be tough for some teams to deal with. Um, and then Cooper's just smart. He knows where to go with the ball. Um, I don't want to overreact too much because this team is shooting very well right now. Uh, yeah. Studi's seven of nine from three on the year. Uh, they made 12 threes first game, 10 in this one. So, like, how do they look when there's a little bit of a lid on the rim? You know, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see. Um, but I mean, won the rebounding battle. They just, this was a solid win against now is Virginia tech really good. No, but it's still a well-coached team that has some good pieces. Couture has been there for since the dinosaurs were there. So, I mean, this is a good win. This is a very good win. Um, I think Ken Palm really likes him. Actually. Ken Palm's got him up at 58 in the country. I mean, last year, the team yeah. was in like the 200. So just, Hey, we said we said this roster is better than last year. We said that. And maybe it's a little bit better than we thought. Well, keep in mind, I went back. South Carolina, I think, lost six SEC games last year, tournament included, by six points or less. They lost three of those in overtime. <laughs> um, so, like, losing that many close games, now you're flipping to the next season and you're already winning a close game like this. I think that is really important for the confidence. Because, yeah. again, not, you know, we got newcomers on there, but a returner like Michi Johnson and someone like that. Right. So yeah. Um, Hey, I, I think they're, I think we were right. I think this roster is more talented and we maybe you're seeing that early on. We'll see how it pans out. Moving forward. All right, Max. South Carolina. Yeah. I, again, I, I think they're, they're moving forward. It's just, I think it may still take them a little longer than other teams, but like they're moving in the right direction. I feel pretty confident about that. So, all right. So here's what we're going to do. I know usually there are times where we'll be able to go through every game, but this was a 13 game slate and we just, again, we are um, doing this a little bit further after the fact that we usually do. So here's what we're going to do, Max. I'm going to give you the floor. I know there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven other games that we have not discussed, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one here, but give me a couple, however you want to give me in terms of what stood out for you, from everything else, and I'm going to, you know, tee you up here by just giving everyone the scores in case they missed it. Vanderbilt gets a 74-67 win over USC Upstate. Kentucky beats Texas A&M Commerce 81-61. Uh, Arkansas 86, Gardner Webb 68, Ole Miss 75, Eastern Washington 64, Alabama 102, Indiana State 80, Auburn 86, Southeastern Louisiana 71, and then. 
there was Nichols, 68, LSU, 66. Anything wow. stand out there from you, Max? <laughs> <laughs> nice setup there. Um, yikes on LSU. Um, <laughs> yikes. Three of 19 from three is not going to do you very well, but, I mean, you can't lose to Nichols. Nichols is not very good. They had 18 turnovers in their first game. Um, I don't know what happened to Will Baker. Uh, Jordan Wright didn't hit a three. It was just a bad game. Um, yeah, I don't have many thoughts on LSU. Yeah. Just bad, bad game. Bad game. Yeah. Um, I'll just fly through real quick some quick thoughts I had. I don't want to take too much from Kentucky and from Vandy. They are without half their teams, so both – both got a win. Both were a little bit ugly, as expected. They don't have major pieces. Reed um, Shepard, stock up, folks. Yes. Stock up. Reed Shepard, all in on him at this point. He is he's so much better defensively than I thought he was going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Kentucky and Vandy, I mean, they both just found a way to get it done. Both need their guys. Um, Alabama, holy offense. I mean, this is ridiculous. Um, the defense is very poor. Uh, they let Moorhead State shoot 43%, Indiana State 51%. Um, but, I mean, they're just good luck, good luck scoring more points than these guys. Yeah. They're going to score. Um, that offense looks unbelievable. Um, and then quick, Arkansas, 15 blocks. Yeah. My goodness. My goodness. How about that for rim protection? Um and uh, Khalif Battle is just – or Caliph. I think I keep saying the first name wrong. Um, but he is exactly what Serge Abari Rice was last year. Like, he's going to come off the bench, but he'll play starters minutes and is just an absolute spark plug. Um, he is really good. Um, Ole Miss. I mean, oh, <laughs> golly, man. Not making me look good here early. Alan Flanagan, man. Come on. Focus hey, on the yeah. positives. Alan Flanagan with a career high 29 points. I'll take it. Um, I mean, this team just got crushed on the boards by Eastern Washington, who got out rebounded by Utah by 20. I mean, this Ole Miss team just is not rebounding the ball at all. Uh, it's a little bit hard with Jamari and Sharp because he's so like it's He's so tall and lengthy. He like it's he's not a great rebounder. Um, but man, like Morrell, one of eleven from three. The team shooting twenty four percent from three. Um, geez, it just it, the offense is anemic. Um, I think TJ Caldwell's got to play over Juju Murray just for rebounding and defense purposes. Um, but man, Ole Miss is uh, it's going to take Beard a few weeks to get that get that thing running. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much – do you have any other outstanding thoughts? I mean, I'll, I'll quickly run through just a couple things. Yeah, I mean, Kentucky only has nine turnovers in two games. I know opponent matters, but, like, seeing them value the ball as sort of a younger team still with the guys that are handling the ball, I think uh, I like that's that. nice to see. Um, yeah, Reed Shepard, plus 23 in that cool. game. God. Like, Ka even Cal said it. He's like – He's got to play. He does. Yeah. Like Reed Shepard's got to play, um, and he will. He'll play twenty five plus minutes, I think, a game moving forward, no matter who comes back. Like I, I he'll play. Um, you mentioned Arkansas, another one of those teams that started slow, but really picked it up. Battle's got forty two points in forty five minutes through two games. On so race. you'll take that if you're an Arkansas fan. Talked about the blocks. I mean, I think we were right about the roster depth. <laughs> These guys got depth. My goodness, they got a lot of options. To work with here, still one by eighteen. Probably didn't play their best game. Still one by eighteen against what I don't think is a bad Gardner Webb team, by the way. So, um, yeah, you mentioned Ole Miss. I'm not gonna add any more on that. Yeah. Alabama, yes. The, I, here's what I have. They are gonna use the Missouri model from yep. last year. They yep. are gonna outscore teams, and defense may not be there on most evenings, uh, but they are gonna outscore teams and. and you know, I think that's kind of what I look at now with Alabama is they clearly have a lot of guys who can score 20 plus points on any given night. We saw that here, Estrada 27, Sears 24, Nelson 20. Um, and yes, the, the numbers efficiency wise on offense were great. Defensively, they were not. Um, and the rim protection is a 
is going to be a bigger issue when they get an SEC play. Maybe not right now. It will as they start playing tougher opponents, but yeah, it's it's something that's going to pop up. Uh, I'm not going to add anything else on Nichols and LSU other than you can't get down 24 and expect to win the game. Like, you just can't do it. And so, of course, they were there. They lose at the buzzer. Doesn't matter. That's just one of those losses that can happen, just like we said with Vanderbilt Presbyterian. You just can't have those kind of losses. Um, Auburn, the, 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 the other the note I have here on them, hit 11 threes. <laughs> they hit that number just twice last year. 11 threes in a game. So, they're better shooting the ball this season. Even it's two games, but like we're seeing that positive trend in the right direction. Same with a team like Mississippi State, right? Um, which I guess we can kind of mention. Mississippi State won on Saturday. We're recording this on Sunday. They took care of business because UT Martin, they hit 13 threes. They have 23 threes now through two games. Right, four, maybe. I saw the, the stat that I put out, Max. But <laughs> they, that's the, so 13 threes was the most they've hit in a game since November 13th, 2021. And this is the first time they've had two 10 plus three point games in a season since 2020 or 2020, 21. And a reminder, they've only played two games. So like nuts that they've already done that. And we've played two games here. So that's just some quick thoughts on Mississippi state, but back to Auburn for just one second, like Jani broom is just, you know, double, double machine at this point. But I also don't want to leave this off. Cause we talked about the Alabama. I think both Alabama and Auburn both got some same issues right now, and yep. that's defense. Um, specifically, I know Bruce Pearl said second half defense for Auburn has not been great in these first two games, and so that's got to get better if they're going to be an elite team. Um, you know, because I don't know that they have the scoring punch that an Alabama has to be able to get away with it. And so, yeah, so that's it. Um, in terms of thoughts, there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Like we said, guys, we'll get a little bit deeper into these when we have smaller slates that we can kind of <laughs> go into a bit more. Uh, and of course, with the SEC slate, once we get to conference play and the bigger non-conference games, you know we've got a huge one coming up. Kansas, Kentucky play, um, you know, a couple of days, so we'll have kind of a little bit more in-depth uh, thoughts on that game specifically in a separate video. But we will try to give as much as we can on these. Just some of these games, you know, that are blowouts. We just don't have a lot to add. But anything else, Max? Before we wrap up, yeah, real quick on Auburn. Um... One thing I said is is Baker Mazar has got to play more minutes. I'm just going to yep. keep saying that until he gets like 30 minutes a game. Uh, he just needs more minutes. The guy's a difference maker out there. But also, why is Chaney Johnson shooting 11 times? And Denver Jones only five? Yeah, you know? got, Denver Jones got to shoot the ball. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to put the ball in your, in your playmaker's hands. I mean, Broom shot 12 times, Chaney Johnson 11. I'm not taking anything away from Chaney Johnson, but it's just like – why is the the leading scores on this team not always Broom, Denver Jones, Aiden Holloway, and Baker Mazar? You know that's that's maybe Jay Will also, but like I feel like the I said it with uh, who else did I say it with Missouri? Um, I just I feel like Bruce Pearl does not have this, and it's still early, and his team is deep, but like this rotation yeah. is just like it, the pieces aren't clicking right now. Um, like they will when he figures this out. Um, that's all I had to say on them. But I mean, still they won by what? 17, 15. Yeah. I think it takes longer sometimes in this era, especially when you have so many new players to get the rotation. I think we're seeing that extended for coaches at times game wise. Like you're seeing the number of games go up until you finally figure it out. Right. And yeah. So I think that's probably not unusual for a lot of teams right now to be in that spot, but we'll have it all covered here. Of course, Southeastern 14 moving forward. Like we said, a big week action coming up, got some big games on the schedule. We will talk about them in separate videos. We'll have our usual prediction videos for games that <laughs> there are multiple games on the slate. If it's just a one game slate, we just are not going to do that. If there's two games, probably won't either, but we'll kind of look at those a little bit more as we go into it again, maybe not uh, for every slate, but we'll keep you covered here with thoughts on all the action. We'll have our basketball power rankings. First one of the year coming up also early uh, this coming week. So you can check that out as well. Hit the subscribe button, check out all our football stuff. Um, as we said earlier, Maybe some coaching changes here soon. Uh, so we'll have that all covered and our predictions for the upcoming week and everything else you come to expect here at Southeastern 14. Uh, so hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, if you want to donate to the channel, you can do that. Join the It Just Means More tier, $3.99 a month. That just is donating for us to make more videos. So uh, again, we appreciate you guys. As always, hit the subscribe button. Find us on any podcast app you use. 
all that other stuff uh, that we have just added to in our plugs uh, all the time. We got so many things to plug now, Max, but it's a good thing. So, thing. and uh, again, we appreciate you guys watching as always. And we appreciate you uh, again, supporting everything we do here on the channel. So thanks as always for watching. We'll talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14 presented by bet online.